welcome back um we are going to get started here on uh q a episode two um and we're going to break down some questions and uh we're going to jump right into it not, we're not going to um waste any time so i just wanted to review with you guys if you didn't watch the very first episode the very first video of q a i really suggest strongly that you go back and you watch that video but i'm going to do a quick mini review um I came up with a concept called straight concept or flex method. Um, in simple terms, whenever you see a question on the MBCOT exam, it's either going to be a straightforward question. There's no guesswork. Uh, guesswork is either a yes or no question. That is it. This is your uh, questions where you really would need to memorize the information um, or have a good understanding of what um, is being asked so for a simple example i said uh is the sky blue or red we can all agree that the sky is blue it's a very um straightforward question where the flex method provides more um, flexibility within the question that can help you figure out what the answer is especially if you don't know what it is so as i say here the question provides key um, at times small details to find correct answer hence some flexibility and just as decision making so as you can see here for my example um again this was what i had in the last video but i'm just going to run through it the question is the sky is dull and sunless with dark heavy clouds what kind of weather can we expect today uh keyword is sunless as you see i have it underlined which is automatic and allow you to cancel out c which is partly cloudy so we're left with cloudy and i'm sorry i said partly cloudy partly sunny and um what we're left with is cloudy or rainy um there's also other keys with the flex method that helps you kind of distinguish what can actually be the possible answer and the reason i also highlighted dark heavy clouds is because the word heavy is what um separates cloudy from rainy well, as we know when there's a buildup of precipitation in the clouds it has to um, release that heaviness, which is rain, and that's what we receive. So the correct, correct answer would be B, rainy. Okay, so that was just a quick mini review. So you understand that with this video, we're going to really talk about the flex method. Again, if you didn't watch the first video, go back, watch it, because I talk about the straight concept, okay? So just real quick, I'm going to review one more time. If you didn't see um, the first video, I'm just going to mention it to you here so you're aware of it. Testing and strategies. I tell all of my um, students when you're taking your test, read the question twice. First time you read it, read it the regular way. Um, the second time you read it, you want to read it very slowly because we oftentimes we read so fast that we can miss key words, key phrases. So it's very important that you read it regularly the first way first time the question as well as the answers then the second time you read that question very slowly and number two very important to um pull out or i should say learn how to pull out keywords or phrases okay number three um what you're being asked you need to pay attention to those uh specific uh wording and a lot of times in the MBCOT exam, or just not even just MBT exam, just in exams um, that are tailored for critical thinking, you're going to see terms like accept, most, and best, okay? And lastly, do not overthink. We all tend to do this. Uh, what the question may be asking could mean or probably meant. Answer the question for what the question is and nothing more, okay? Um, so that is pretty straightforward. Let's jump into it, okay? Okay, so again, this is a example of a flex method. Um, I'm gonna read this question, but I do advise you guys to pause your video to try to figure out the answer for yourself. First thing I want you to do is to use the flex method technique by pulling out those key um, words or phrases. And then I want you to also um, write down what you think the answer is based on using the flex method. Um, and I'll, I'll also go over that. So here we go. 
During an initial interview, parents described their child as having difficulty communicating and interacting with others. The OT observes him repeatedly gazing upward and scanning the ceiling or quickly patting his hip. The behaviors described are most likely to be associated with what disorder? A. Childhood conduct. B. Attention deficit hyperactivity. C. Obsessive compulsive. Or D. Autism spectrum disorder. Okay, so this is the best time now. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get into it. Okay. All right, I know you thought I was gonna give you the answer, but not yet, because I want us to break down this flex method with this question, okay? So here we go. As you can see, I highlighted those uh, keywords and phrases, okay? So the first thing that I noticed with this question is difficulty communicating, all right? That's one. The next one is interacting with others. So we wanna look at behaviors where there's difficulty communicating. There is um, difficulty interacting with others. Um, and also maybe they, I wouldn't say just necessary difficulty interacting with others. Maybe there might be a deficit there. Okay, maybe a social, um, a social deficit there. Um, also the OT observes. So this is what the OT is seeing happen, okay? Uh, the OT is repeatedly seeing uh, gazing upward. Okay. So that means they're kind of doing, doing this motion where they're kind of looking up and coming down, right? Cause they're gazing. Um, it also says scanning the ceiling. So if you're gazing, you're kind of moving your head back and forth, but if you're scanning, you're just going slowly up on the ceiling. Okay. So that's how that would look. Um, if someone was doing that or a child was doing that and, uh, another key thing that I pulled out of this question is quickly patting his hip. Okay. So, you know, you guys know what a pat is, but you know, sometimes we'll see a lot of things like that. Okay. But for the most part, the question says patting hip. Okay. All right. So I mentioned about those words that you want to pay attention to when they're asking the question. Okay. As you can see here in purple, most likely. So we are looking what is most likely the correct answer. Think about the word most. Most is most likely is, is simply saying out of this, what is the best answer? Okay. So most likely to be associated with behavior with with what behavior okay so i hope you guys have your answers here we go if you said d you are absolutely correct okay so let's talk about this let's go over the explanation of each of them so the first one we talked to, that was mentioned was uh childhood conduct with childhood conduct, this is defined as mental and behavioral problems, antisocial, aggressive, and defiant behavior. Um, if we go back to the question, there's nothing in here that really says anything about being aggressive or defiant at all. So we're automatically going to cancel that one out. Okay. Then the next one, attention deficit hyperactivity. Again, with this one, it's... It's defined as a chronic condition, attention, difficulty, impulsivity, or poor concentration. Well, we do have a little bit of that in the question where it said that, um, let's go back to the question. Um, we may have a little bit of that when it says difficulty communicating, but really that doesn't really fit in either um, because it's saying impulsivity and att attention difficulty. So it's not really showing that the child is having a difficult, difficult time paying attention. It's showing that the, the child is put, uh, doing certain behaviors. Um, let's look at the next one. Obsessive compulsive, compulsive. So this is a personality disorder. Um, people that have this kind of disorder usually are perfectionist um, and they 
have attention to detail and need for control. Again, with the question, there was really nothing that talked about this. So of course, this is why this autism spectrum disorder is a correct answer. Why? Is because it comes in a variable severity, okay? And it is uh, child are gonna present with difficulties in social interaction, communication, repetitive mo movements such as rocking, spinning, or hand flapping, again, hands, remember the pat on the hip and there's going to be literal inconsistent eye contact which is what i showed you before with them scanning the ceiling okay gazing so i hope this was helpful um the next episode i do will be one more question we'll do it a little different where you would have to figure out if it's a straight or flex method and come up with the answer and we'll discuss um, if you guys are liking how i'm doing these videos please be sure to leave a comment below I will continue to make more. Um, I really like doing this platform because uh, you can also see me talk and I can also explain um, in detail. So I think I'm gonna continue on this path. I think this is gonna allow me to really do more videos for you guys. So please, if you are interested, go ahead at payhip.com. As you can see there on the left, you can purchase my book, 12 case studies where I really break down intervention, documentation, examples, and I go over the 12 often seen diagnoses in skilled nursing facilities. And if you're interested in uh, mentorship or tutoring, be sure to um, go to ask to me for help dot as dot me. And you can um, go ahead and speak to me on that platform, but just also keep in mind, I will be doing a course that will be available to you April, coming this April, as well as I'm going to be working on a CU. CU may be in April, but it might not. I'm not quite sure yet. And um, this program is tailored for, uh, my course is tailored for CODIS. However, I do do some sessions with OTR. So feel free to email me if you have any questions, guys. All right, take care.